Number 43. Uh, the amount of money A accrued at the end of N years when a certain amount P is invested at a compound annual rate is given by A equals P times 1 plus R to the N. If the person invests $180, that's P, at an account that pays 9%, point zero nine is your R. Um, interest compounded annually found the balance after 10 years. 10 is N. So it's a equals 180 times 1 plus 0 0.09 to the 10th power. We're going to do 1.09 to the 10th power in our calculator. And we get 180 times 2.367. And we're going to leave that unrounded in our calculator. I rounded it to write down on my paper. But we're going to leave it unrounded in our calculator and multiply by 180, and we get A equals $426. And now is my final answer. I'm going to round it to the hundreds place, hundredths place, because I'm talking about money. Number 44, graph 3 uh, times 1 fourth to the x power. This is exponential. Exponentials have an asymptote, and in this case, it's not translated anywhere, so the asymptote is uh, y equals 0. So, so far, I'm going to plug in negative 1, 0, and 1. I get 3 times 1 fourth to the negative 1 power, which is 3 times 4, 12. 3 times 1 fourth to the 0 power is 3 times 1, which is 3. And 3 times 1 fourth to the 1 is 3 times 1 fourth, which is 3 fourths. So when I draw this graph, I get So let's count this, 3, 6, 9, 12. So at 0, I have 3. At negative 1, I have 12. And I have 1 fourth. And then I have an asymptote at y equals 0. If I have a plus 5 on the outside, it translates it up and down with that. And I connect it. So really, you're looking for the asymptote in the right place. Is the y-intercept correct? Is it in the right direction? This is exponential decay, so it's decreasing from left to right. If this was a 4 instead of a 1 fourth, it would be increasing from left to right, and it would be exponential growth. Number 45 is f of x. I'm going to rewrite this. Negative e to the x minus 1. So this is a... Translation, down 1 and a reflection in the x-axis, right? So the reflection in the x-axis goes first and then down 1. e to the x is an exponential growth function. When I plug in 0 to my parent graph, e to the x, I get 1, right? e to the 0 equals 1. When I plug in 1, e is 2.718. So that's going to give me a pretty good idea. So 1 and 1, 2.7. So my parent graph is this black one. Now I'm going to reflect it on the x-axis. So it should go down. Let me do this in red. Reflect it. And then this point would be down here. And then everything's going to get moved down 1. So here we are, and our asymptote is going to be at negative 1. And there's a pretty good idea of what the graph looks like. It's, um, it's important to just know, 1, it has an asymptote at y equals 0 for the parent function because it's exponential, and then it's going to cross at 0, 1. Now, if you reflect it and move it down, that should help you identify the correct graph. Number 46, if 
Four, our $6,500 is invested at a rate of 6% compounded continuously. So P is 6,500. R is 0 0.06. Please make sure you put the decimal correct when you convert from a decimal uh, percent to a decimal. Find the balance after three years. So T equals three. And our equation equals A equals PE to the RT power. So this is 6,500 times e to the point zero 0.06 times 3. And in the calculator, I'm going to do second ln. The e button is above the ln key. It'll say e to the x. So point zero 0.03 times point zero 0.06 times 3. And that's 6,500 times about one point. 197. Again, I'm not going to round in my calculator. Times it by 6,500, 7,781 and 91 cents. Uh, I missed that one in there. So 77, dollars and 91 cents is the final answer on that. Number 47. Evaluate the log base two of eight. That should be a quick one. 2 to what power equals 8? Remember, that's what it means. 2 to what power equals 8? So 8 equals 3. So the log base 2 of 8 is 3. Graph the log base 6 of x. The log has a, a horizontal asymptote. And I'm going to make a table using 6, 1, and 1 sixth. The base... 1 and 1 over the base. And when I do the log base 6 of 6, I get 1. When I do the log base 6 of 1, I get 0. And when I do the log base 6 of 1 sixth, I get negative 1. And when I graph that, I have an asymptote at x equals 0. There's no horizontal translation, so it's just at 0. And then... Oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 6, negative 1. And the graph looks like this. Okay, you should have a general idea of what the graphs should look like um, and what their asymptotes are. Number 49, express as a single logarithm our um, product property says two logs with the same base, they both have base R, that are added together can be written as one log when we multiply what's inside. So that's the log base R of 15 times 35. And 15 times 35 is 525. So the log base R of 525 is the single logarithm. Number 50. 1 8 equals 4 to the 5x plus 8. I can rewrite these both as a power of 2. This is equating our bases. This was the easiest uh, equations we solved in that chapter. 2 to the negative 3 power is 1 8, right? And 4 is 2 squared to the 5x plus 8. Now that my bases are the same, I can equate my um, exponents. So negative 3 using the 1 to 1 property equals 2 times 5x plus 8, so that's 10x plus 16. And then I can solve negative 19 equals 10x. x is negative 19 tenths. Number 51, 1.95 to the x equals 26. There were several ways to solve this. I could log both sides. I could log 1.95, both sides, base 1.95, or I could rewrite it as a log. When you rewrite it as a log, this is the base. Let's see. This is our base. This is inside, and the x is what's on the other side. So it's kind of like this little L. Log base 1.95 of 26 equals x. And the question is, how do I find that? We do it in our calculator using the change of base formula. 
log of 26 divided by the log of 1.95, remembering to close parentheses. So the log of 26 divided by the log of 1.95, plug that in your calculator, remembering to put in your parentheses, and you should get 4.879. It's approximately 4.879. Number 52, e to the negative point zero seven t equals 8. Again, we can rewrite this log base e, log base e, which is ln of 8, equals the exponent. So the natural log of 8 equals negative 0 0.707 t, and I can divide by negative 0.07 and then I can plug it into my calculator. The natural log of 8 is 2.079 divided by negative 0 0.07. Again, rounding on my calculator, but not in, or rounding on the, the paper, but not in calculator, I get negative 29.706. And let's see, 53 on this page. We have the log equation, the log base 5 of 3x plus 9 equals 2. So I can make this 5 squared equals three. what's inside the log. So 5, oh, this is not how we wrote it before. We wrote it like this because of inequalities. We wrote 3x plus 9 equals 5 squared. We kept the x on the same side of the equal sign. It doesn't make a difference with equals, but it does with inequalities. And so that's 3x plus 9 equals 25. Subtract 9. 3x equals 16. Divide by 3, and x is 16 thirds. Number 54, which is this graph? So let's look at this. They're all um, hyperbolas, so we know they're the correct shape, but the question is, are the asymptotes correct? So first, we're going to look at our vertical asymptote. It comes from the denominator. It's x equals 1. And our horizontal asymptote comes from the coefficients, 1 divided by 1, y equals 1. So we're looking for the graphs that have an asymptote of positive 1 vertically and positive 1 um, horizontally, which is not this one. This one's at negative 2 and positive 3. It is not B. This is at positive, negative 3 and positive 1. Um, it is not C, which is at negative 1 and negative 2. The only graph with the correct asymptotes is D. Uh, if you got two equations with the same asymptotes, two graphs with the same asymptotes, you could plug in, um, in this case, you could plug in 0 and find out if I plugged in 0 minus 2 and 0 minus 1, I get negative 2 over negative 1, which is a positive 2. And I would look for which graph has that point 0 comma 2. Looking at 55. Simplify. Factor, factor, factor. If you're looking to simplify rational expressions, you need to factor the top and bottom and then cancel things out. So n squared plus 2n minus 24 is eh, not x, but n. n plus 6 and n minus 4. Those multiply to uh, ne negative 24 and add to positive 2. And two numbers that multiply to 28 and add to negative 11, x minus 7, or n minus 7, and n minus 4. Now I can divide out my n minus 4, and my final answer would be n plus 6 over n minus 7. So 56. Um, on these ones, I kind of like to just multiply across the top first. So I get 5e to the fifth df. And I like to write my variables in the same order in the denominator. So I'm going to go E4, EF times 4D is 4ED 
f. Now I can use my exponent properties to divide out the f, the d. One of the e's cancels one of these e's and makes it to the fourth power, so I get 5e to the fourth over 4. Number 57, uh, I can't factor, I can't factor, but I can factor the x squared minus 64. So I'm going to come do this up here. x minus 8 times x minus 7 over x plus 8 times x minus 8. You should recognize the n squared, or x squared minus 64 is a difference of squares. And the minus 8s, x minus 8s divide out and we get x minus 7 over x plus 8. And number 8, we're going to factor the n squared minus 9, that's n plus 3, n minus 3 over n plus 3 times n over 2 times n minus 3, factor out the common factor on 2n minus 6. The n, minus, the n plus 3s divide out, Remember, I can divide vertically, vertically, and diagonally. Horizontal is multiplication, so I need to divide diagonally. So I can also divide out the n minus 3s, and my final answer is just n divided by 2. To do division, again, I'm going to factor x plus 6 as x minus 6 over x plus 5. Divide, I change it to multiply the reciprocal 1 over x plus 6. Now I can divide out any common factors. I see an x plus 6. And so what's left is x minus 6 times x plus 5. Another division problem here. So I'm going to factor the top here. Um, two numbers multiply to 21 and add to 10. x plus 3, x plus 7, over x plus 3, times x minus 3. That's the x squared plus 9. And then times the reciprocal, x minus 7 on top, x plus 7 in the denominator. And then divide out my x plus 3s and my x plus 7s. And what's left is x minus 7 over x minus 3. Number 61 is adding, and my denominators are the same, so all I need to do is combine like terms in the numerators. So negative 2x minus x is negative 3x. 3 minus 3 is 0. Over 15x, the denominator stays the same. And then I have to simplify. My x's divide out, and 3 goes into 5, 15 5 times. So we end up with negative 1 fifth. Remember, if anything divides out on the numerator completely, you're left with a 1 on top. Number 12, or not 12, 62. Looks like you have the same denominator, but it's not. You have a plus 8 and a minus 8. So we have to multiply the first fraction by x minus 8 and x minus 8. And then we'll multiply the second fraction by the x plus 8. And that'll give us a common denominator. So the first one is 4x minus 32 over x plus 8, x minus 8, plus x plus 8 over x plus 8, x minus 8. You don't want to simplify anything here. Don't divide out anything in your fractions because the whole point was to get a common denominator so then you can add them together. So now I can num add my numerators. I have 4x and x, which is 5x. I have negative 32 plus 8, which is minus 24, over x plus 8, x minus 8. And I can't factor anything out of the numerator, so that can't be simplified. And that's our final answer. Number 63, check for extraneous solutions. Uh, when I have a proportion like this, a fraction equal to a fraction is a proportion, and I can use cross multiplication. So I get... 5 times w plus 3 equals 5 times w squared minus 9. So I get 5w plus 15 equals 5w squared minus 45. And I can put everything on one side. So minus the 5w, so 5w squared minus 5w minus 15 gives me negative 60 
equals 0. And I can divide out the 5 times w squared minus w minus 12 equals the 0. I can basically divide by the 5 because I'm solving and I get w squared minus w minus 12. And two numbers of multiplied negative 12 and add to negative 1 is w minus 4 and w plus 3. That gives me w equals 4 and negative 3. Now if I plug negative 3 back in up here, I get 0. Negative 3 plus 3. When I plug in 3 over here, I also get 0. So that's extraneous because I can't divide by 0. So my only answer is w equals 4. We're going to do number 64. Again, it's a proportion, so I can cross multiply. So I get x minus 2 times x minus 4 equals x plus 5 times x minus 6. So multiply that out, x squared minus 6x minus tw uh, 8 equals x squared minus x minus 30. Look at the foiling. Let's see how I did that. I'll get negative 6 plus 6x plus 5x on that side. Now I'll subtract my x squared, so that's going to cancel those out. So I have negative 6x minus 8 equals negative x minus 30. And I can add x, and uh, this becomes plus 8, sorry. And I can subtract 8 now minus 8, so negative 5x equals negative 38, divide by negative 5, and x equals positive 38 fifths. And number 65 is kind of special, because my denominators are the same. And if the denominators are equal, and these two fractions are equal to each other, then the numerators must be equal, so I get x squared equals 16. This can only be done when my denominators are all equal, because then the tops have to be the same if they're equal to each other. And so x equals plus or minus 4. If I plug in the positive 4 in the denominator, I'm good. 4 plus 4 is 8, but the negative 4 gives me 0, so that's extraneous. So my only answer is the positive 4, because the negative 4 is extraneous.